So we're going to talk about the Dan Wesson 8-inch revolver from ASG today, specifically how to clean the inner barrel and mount the scope rail to the top of the gun so that you can mount optics onto this thing. So here we go. First things first, you want to tap out this pin using a little hammer and a punch and once you get down too far for the punch to handle then you can use the small silver allen key, allen wrench comes with the gun to tap the pin out the rest of the way. Then when you get the pin out far enough you can just flip the gun over and use some pliers like so. Pull that thing right out, should come out nice and easy. If it's not coming out easily then flip the gun over and try punching it out from the other side. I think it, it, it does matter which direction you try to punch it out. Once you do that, the second pin you need to pop out is behind the cylinder. So you got to pop out the cylinder there using the thumb release. You can see there, there's the pin you need to pop out. And this is definitely a directional pin, so don't try and pop it out from the other side, from this side here. So again, take your punch pin. You don't really have to hit it very hard. It should just pop right out. Just like that. There's your little pin. It's a very small part, so make sure when you pop it out that you've got a safe place to put it. Once you've done that, then you can pull the outer barrel assembly out. And there is our cylinder and grip. You can just set that aside. So now that we've got the outer barrel assembly separated from the body, we can take some paper towel strips. That's just what I use. Uh, about two and a half inches long or so and about a half an inch wide. Then you fold that in half and then you can thread it through a unjamming rod or cleaning rod. And then wrap it around like that. So just set that down for a sec, then get your outer barrel assembly, pull the inner barrel out. You'll notice it's got a spring on the end of it, so don't lose that. It may get stuck inside the outer barrel, so if you don't, if it doesn't come out when you take the inner barrel out, you need to look inside that outer barrel to see if it's in there. You can just take that little end cap off the other side, set that down. So there's our outer barrel. And since we let go of the paper towel, we want to kind of just rewrap that a little bit. And then what I do is when I'm inserting, I use in a twisting motion. I insert the cleaning rod in a twisting motion just like that in the same direction as the uh, way I rolled the, the paper towel. And then I keep twisting all the way as I'm pushing through. And I don't know if you have to do it like that, but to me it just kind of makes sense to kind of do that pushing and twisting technique. And you can see there we've got quite a bit of dirt and grease in there. For some reason, ASG or whoever was behind the scenes producing this gun decided that they needed to put a lot of grease and dirt in your inner barrel right out of the box. Um, nothing against ASG, actually. I'm a big fan of them. But it's kind of annoying that they would, they would do that. So anyway... What you want to do is just keep doing this, this, this method of, of swabbing out the inner barrel until basically you can drag a paper towel swab or whatever you're using to swab the inner barrel with and be able to drag it through the, through the barrel without any dirt coming out on the other end of the, uh, of the paper towel. So do that and uh, once you, we've got that then we're ready to move on to the next stage. So now that we've got the inner barrel cleaned next stage of the fun here is to mount the scope uh, the rail for the for mounting scopes or optics I should say to the top of the gun so first you want to take the rail here you can see on the bottom side of it it's got some some little rails uh, that we'll show you in a second the side with the steepest slant I guess on the on the left side that's the side I'm gonna put first I don't really know if that's the front or not it might even tell you in the manual but I don't I don't like reading manuals so we're just gonna do it this way 
So just kind of slide that onto the top of the rail and it's getting kind of tough there to push it any further, but if I think if I wanted to, I could probably get it just about at any point along that rail, that top rail. It goes all the way basically to the, to the uh, front site. So we'll just put it right there just for illustrative purposes. And then once you've got it on there, once you've got it in the spot you want, you just take your Allen key that comes with the gun and you tighten the two set screws on the top. Just like that. And you don't need to over tighten because there's no real recoil on this gun. So just make it snug without, you don't want to bend or bend the Allen key or strip the, uh, even worse, strip the screws, the set screws. So just give it, you know, be, be firm, but don't, don't crank on it. Uh, now we put the inner barrel back in and obviously that is not the end that goes with the spring. There we go. Now I'm figuring it out. Okay. So put that back in the inner barrel like so and you kind of have to play around with it, wiggle it around because it uh, does need to sit further into the uh, outer, outer assembly. This is some great camera work. There we go. And so when it's in there it should be spring loaded and kind of sit out just like that a little bit. Then you can insert the outer barrel back into the main part of the gun and then we get our two tension pins and pop those guys back in. Probably easiest to do the top one first just the way this gun, this gun is designed. And when you're tapping these things back in, again, I'm using a punch. Um, no need to really hammer on this thing very hard. Just kind of tap it, and it might take you a little while, but it's a lot better to be gentle with these things and reduce the risk of damaging the aesthetics of your beautiful gun rather than getting impatient and hitting it pretty hard and messing up the finish. So it's a good-looking gun. Um, and if you own one, you uh, know what I'm talking about. So anyway, there's one pin in. Then the second pin uh, you want to put in that goes behind the cylinder, as you'll see. And this one's definitely a directional pin. They're one side is thicker than the other, so it does matter what side you, you put in first. And the easiest way to go about sticking that thing in the hole is to use a pair of pliers, which... I am just now realizing. There we go. There we go. There it is. I'm learning. All right. Perfect. There it is. All right. So pliers, needle nose pliers, very handy. Then you take your punch and uh, just gently tap that thing in. But wait, what's this? Oh, there's my bald head. I just realized I'm putting the pin in the wrong way. You got to put it in from the other side. Oh, yeah. See, even airsoft bloggers have their moments of weakness. So anyway, flip the gun over. Sorry about that little detour. But I just like to keep you on your toes. Flip the gun over, put that pin back in there, and I'm just using my finger to kind of set it in there tightly. Just gently tap. You probably don't even need a punch. Like I'm just tapping it in just real gently. And there you have it. Gently tap just a little bit just to get it set in there. Now we're good to go. We're in business. We've got a clean inner barrel, and now we've got a rail to mount some optics on. Now, what kind of optics would one put on an amazing gun such as this, the Dan Wesson 8 inch revolver? Well, I've got a couple ideas.